For some reason, Nick, uh, the NFL and baseball, even hockey, mostly get it right when it comes to MVPs. Uh, It's a very productive player who's very valuable. The team wouldn't be the same without him. But the NBA is different for whatever reasons. They tend to embrace a story, sometimes a statistically significant player, who's not terribly valuable like Russell Westbrook. In fact, players generally are better when they leave Westbrook. And that leads me to Chris Paul. Has anybody taken a deep breath? Does everybody realize I grew up when Phoenix was good? That feels like the 80s, the 70s. I said it, I think Joey and I have been saying this. I would vote Chris Paul number two or one MVP. I'm interested in your perspective on this. You are a diehard NBA fanatic. How do you view Chris Paul? Chris Paul should be the 2021 NBA MVP. And it is not a lifetime achievement award, but it is his lifetime of achievement that validates what has happened this season. As a rookie, he gets to New Orleans. They win 20 more games than they won the previous year. He leaves, they lose 25 more games than they (laughs) lost his last year there. He gets to the Clippers. They immediately get to round two of the playoffs. He leaves, and despite having Blake Griffin still on the team, they're a 500 team. He gets to the Rockets. They immediately win 65 games, have the best record in the NBA, and are up 3-2 on the KD Steph Clay Warriors before he hurts his hamstring. He gets to the Thunder. They are trying to be bad. They want to tank. He's too good. They make the playoffs and get to game seven. He gets to Phoenix, a Phoenix team that was 26 and 39 last year before the bubble. A Phoenix team that was just hoping he would get them over the hump into the playoffs. The change for them is they got rid of Oubre and Rubio, added Chris Paul. Ayton's still there, Booker's still there, and their numbers are the same as last year. And they have the best record in the NBA. If it is about affecting winning... Chris Paul has been more valuable this year than any player in basketball. Joker has unbelievable numbers, and he has the highest PER in the last six years. We've just given it to the guy with the highest PER. That's not the award. Steph's been amazing. He's leading the league in scoring. There's an award for that. It's called scoring champ. Chris Paul has been the most valuable player in basketball, and I... And I don't know how deniable that is, given what the Suns had been the entire time Booker was there, including last season, and the fact that as we sit here today, they have the best record in the NBA. And let me add one other small thing to this, Colin. It's going to look really bad for the league if Joker wins the award and they have to give it to him in a conference room instead of on a basketball court because the Nuggets have been eliminated from the playoffs before it is announced. That happened to them once before. They will be signing up for it to happen again. So I think Chris Paul's the MVP. I don't think he's going to win it, but I think he should. Very good stuff today, Nick. I really appreciate this. And, um, yeah, you know what I thought of you the other day? Oh. Because LeBron oh, is he's getting old and he's getting injured. And when you get old and injured, you get re-injured a lot. I just, how do you reconcile, I mean, the best player you've ever seen play, he's your unanimous number one. You're not old yet. Yeah. And, and you're, you have a beautiful young wife, so she'll keep you young and you have young kids. Mm-hmm. How do you reconcile LeBron James is now old, injured, re-injured, and it looks like we can see, yeah. we can see close to the end. Can you see it in the reflection of the championship ring he won literally eight months ago? Or in the reflection of the finals MVP trophy that is the most recent one given out that is sitting on his mantle? I'm not sure if that's where you see the end. I, so, I, I listen, LeBron is almost to the day the exact same age as me. I feel great every morning. It's the best I've ever felt. So I think he's going to be just fine. Play in game, schmay in game. It doesn't matter. In any series they play, they're going to have the best player on the court. So I'll still pick the Lakers. But I understand you're trying to make me feel old, make LeBron feel old. If only they hadn't just won the title a few months ago. Oh, that was a pretty good answer. Uh, <laughs> Nick Wright, my buddy, first things first. Good seeing you. That was funny. See you. Uh, bye. See you. Bye. Um, 
so I we were we were you know it's funny about Chris Paul too. It's rare. You know, you could say, well, I mean, Chris Paul, um, he's good, but nobody knows who he is. No, he's got a bunch of national commercials. Well, he's not respected by players. He's LeBron's best friend. Like LeBron, D. Wade, and Chris Paul are like best friends. It's weird that Chris Paul can be great. The story we just laid out is well documented. He's, he's, LeBron loves him. He's won everywhere. He's got commercials. And yet the NBA writers don't respect him. It's like weird. Like, he's one of those unexplainable guys that all the boxes you need. Do star players love him? Check. Do his teams get better? Check. Does he have a story that we can put our arms around? God, the Phoenix story is incredible. Check. He's got national commercials. He's not playing, like, in Memphis. Check. And he's still, the NBA writers just struggle with this. It's a, it, it's, now, we've been on this, I've been on this for, like, four years with him. Is, and and I, I talked to Doc Rivers about this. Not long ago on a podcast, he said, listen, Chris is great to coach and he's tough to coach because he's strong willed and really smart and he's usually right. So when you're coaching him, know that if you say something, he's got an answer for it. It's like coaching Aaron Rodgers. But don't kid yourself. He's got all the components to be the MVP, the story, the commercials, the the, the wins, the respect. I mean, we did a thing. Was it three weeks ago when they had the odds out and he was like sixth? <laughs> it's like it's almost like the MVP is sort of set up before the season starts. Yeah, that, that's, like we we start with like which what narrative is going to go throughout the season? Very good. And you point. couldn't have predicted that Phoenix was going to be this great. So it's kind of decided before the season even starts. 